Hello, hello, hello! It's Pam Duffy and I'm excited because today marks the start of a new series where I'm going to deep dive in E-Rank. E-Rank is the new name for Eats E-Rank. It's the website tool that I love the best for helping me grow my Etsy business, um, for helping all sorts of things, finding keywords, finding where you rank, sorting out your listings, all sorts of things. And we're gonna deep dive into individual pages, individual tools in this wonderful website. And I wanna show you how I use them, what I find helpful about them, and all sorts of goodness. So let's get started with this keyword tool. So you can get to it either through tools on the side and down to the keyword tool, or it's also got a shortcut at the top. Now, I before we get started, I wanna let you know, I use eRank Pro, which is the paid version of Etsy Rank, but most of the things that you see, you can also get on the free site. They're ridiculously, um, f f they're ridiculously good with what they're giving away for their free generous that's the word they're ridiculously generous with us with what they give away for free so most of the things you see me do you can do on the free version of this tool certain things like comparing keywords you can't necessarily do I'll show you that screen at a later point you can't necessarily do that all at once but you can simply pick out individual, you can look at individual things and then pull them together. So the free version has fantastic functionality. So here we are in the keyword tool, not a whole lot to see to start with. We just have the area where we can look up our keywords and there's a list, it remembers the the history of how we've used this tool. Now, I just want to say before we get started, what are keywords? Now, a keyword is just this thing that you're hoping that a buyer will search for and you want your item to come up for it. So it's a thing that's going to describe what it is that you're trying to sell. It's basically the search query. If you're on Etsy and a customer searches for something, that that term that they search for that's going to be your keyword so just going to have a look for some keywords so all you do in this is into the enter keywords bit you enter some keywords like it says and not only has it remembered your keywords at the side but we've also got a drop down of things we've searched for as well so we will quickly have a little search for a keyword of needle felted because I make needle felted stuff. So let's see if this is a good term or not. You just hit look up. It takes a wee minute as it goes into Etsy and digs out some data for us. The data, this is a fantastic tool and I just want to explain everything that's here. So now that it's dug into Etsy and this is all real time so you can see how long this takes. To start with, we've got some traffic lights across the top this just shows us at a glance things about this item so first of all the competition is on a red it's saying very high competition and if we hover over the little question mark here if it wants to let me here we go and um, this is the estimated number of Etsy listings that can be found when searching for the keyword so this is the number of people you're up against. Now it's a red. This isn't always a bad thing. I'll explain about this in more detail later and in further videos, but it's just given as a warning. It's saying for the term needle felted, there's a lot of people out there. And from for Etsy, a lot of people is saying more than 50,000 listings, which is quite a lot that you're up against. And then we have demand. This is a relative measure of how popular the terms are in the eyes of potential buyers. Um, Etsy doesn't release this information, so this is coming from Bing on this page. We'll talk about things on another page at another point. Um, but this is demand. This is an estimate of how much we think e how much people are actually searching for this. So as you can see already, we've got an item, we've got a term that has a lot of people with items for it, but only a medium amount of people searching for it. And then engagement, when we hover over this, engagement is a relative measure of how much Etsy buyers engage with the result. E-Rank uses views and favorites data from Etsy to determine engagement. The higher the engagement, the more likely products are to be viewed, favorited and purchased. 
So this is an idea. Very high engagement is a good thing. It means of the listings that um, E-Rank is looking up, it's seeing that customers are engaging with them quite well. We don't know about the selling experience, but they're liking, they're viewing it, they're, they're heart in it. So we can tell that people like what they're seeing. When they search for this, they like what they're, they're seeing. So the traffic light system gives us an idea. Green means something's really good. It would usually, in the engagement, it means high or very high engagement. Again, demand, high or very high demand. And in the competition, green would mean low competition so ideally the most wonderful thing would be able to get an item that's all greens but that's like hen's teeth so using keyword tools is to try and find keywords that are the best based on all the information that we have so let's have a wee look down here so we've got the graph showing us long tail graph now what long tail means it's it's based on what the keyword is so basically how much competition it has and it it kind of means how specific the term is so this is somewhere off to the left slightly so there's a bit more competition um it tells us what it what an item is it's needle felted but if i was to add more words to that if i was to say for example needle felted dog then that would mean there would be less items with the term it would be less competitive but it's also more specific if somebody's searching for a needle felted dog they have a better idea of what they're looking for an example of something up on the left hand side here could be something like the word ring now there's lots of competition there's going to be a whole load of items with the term ring but it's not very specific this is a broad search so if someone searches just for the word ring they probably don't have the best idea exactly what they're looking for whereas if they searched for purple gemstone gothic ring or some crazy such thing like that that would be less competition but more specific so you want to find that sweet spot and search trend this is super important this is from Brit this is from Bing this is showing for this term needle felted people are searching for that term it is super important because no matter how amazing a keyword is if nobody's searching for it, they won't find you. So we've got to find something that's got a bit of a search history. And then these statistics here, again, really interesting to see this. It's telling us, first of all, for the term needle felted, 50,000 listings have been found or rather 50,000 plus. It stops. It stopped counting at 50,000. That just tells us there's a lot. And then out of them, Etsy rank analyzes the top 100, which is kind of important. We want to know what our competition is on the first 100 pages. When someone searches for this, the first, not first 100 pages, the first 100 listings, this is our competition that we want to beat. Because again, not only is there no point aiming for a keyword that isn't searched for, but the keyword you're aiming for, you really want to rank high for it. You want to be found within the first few listings. So this is our competition that we want to beat. So looking at the average price, this is in dollars, but it gives us an estimate and it's telling us the average price is $34 for a listing like this. This gives you an idea, again, the competition you're against. Is yours a real high-end piece or a really cheap piece? Maybe this term wouldn't be a term that you would want to be found in the search for if yours was very different from what everyone else's is. Or perhaps if it was very different, that would be a good thing. Search your behavior. That's what it depends. Now, average views. Again, this gives us an idea in these first hundred listings, the average views that these listings have is 6,000 views, well, over 6,000 views. And the total number of views for these hundred is nearly a million views. And we look at the average hearts for a listing is 835. Average daily views is 5.6 and average weekly views is 39.2. Now, why is this important? For a couple of reasons. Again, this is telling us that the items that have needle felted as a tag 
are fairly popular items. They seem to be getting a high number of views, they're getting a high number of hearts. I mean, getting average daily views of five views a day, these are in the top tier of listings. So this might give you an idea whether it's going to be possible for your item to rank in this search. If you have items, if you have a shop that has items that's able to get five views a day for each item, then you could say to yourself, it's quite likely I might be able to rank alongside these. But if we're a brand new shop, this might not be a keyword that we want to aim for because the, the average number of views, you know, these are massive listings. That's not to say that we won't be able to list we won't be able to rank for this. I have plenty of videos on strategies of how to do this, but it gives us an idea. If you're a brand new tiny shop, this might not be the best keyword to attempt to rank for. So our trend, this is looking at Google shopping statistics. Really important again to see on Google trends, looking for the term needle felted on Google, on Google shopping. There is interest, there is search volume for that term. So everything is telling us that this is a term that people do search for, the listings do get seen. It's possibly not a bad term if you can rank for it. And that depends on the size of your shop and the quality of your listing. But so we've got an idea here about this listing, this term. Okay, and then as we scroll down, we get a little word cloud of other keywords of items that have the tag needle felted. What other terms are people using? What other things are important? And this might give you some ideas of other popular terms. So, for example, if you're looking at needle felted, needle felt is often searched for, needle felted animals, felted animals, felted mouse, needle felting. It gives you an idea of different terms, which is super helpful. And then as we scroll down even further, we've got these related tags with their little traffic light things. This can just give you an idea perhaps of some other tags that you could use in the listing or perhaps if you decided that that keyword you were searching for was not a very good keyword for you, it might give you an idea of a more specific keyword. As we can see here, well, needle felted is very high competition. But if we move down further to needle felted animal, that drops down to just high competition. You're against 18,000 instead of 50,000 plus. Even needle felting is a little bit lower the needle felted. So this might give you some ideas, not only if these are specific to your item, but if we look and say needle felted animal has less competition, but is still very high engagement, but again, very low demand. So is this a good item? Possibly not. And again, this long tail keyword where it is on the graph up above, is it towards the lower competition or up in the very very specific or is it very broad? Um, so we're ho hopefully wanting to aim for long tail keyword things where we can. This might also give you an idea of things that you could make or buy if you're vintage or something like that, things to look out for. For example, these are all very high engagement, but well, high or very high. But if we have a look, needle felted Needle felted owl actually has high engagement, medium demand, but really low competition. So actually, if you're needle felting stuff, it might be an idea to have a go at needle felting an owl. So there's an idea for something that you could create, even if your listing that you were thinking of isn't relevant to that. It might be something to think about in the future. And scrolling down, we have a little graph of the range of prices. We knew what the average was, which is somewhere up around the $35, but it just shows us that these listings go from $3. There's two listings priced at $3. I don't know how people can needle felt that low, all the way up to $260. So it's possible that a range of prices, you possibly don't have to worry so much about the price of your item in competition with everything else. Whereas if you looked at this graph and it was all 
listings were just in a lump here and there was nothing at the higher end, then perhaps that search term, if your item is a higher end item, perhaps that search term is not the best. And here we have top listings, which is again super useful. You've seen the average of these listings, but this gives you an idea. You can have a quick look into some more details of the listings that are ranking for the term. So for the term needle felting, these are the top listings at the, at the moment in time when Etsy rank searched. And this is an unlogged in search, so it doesn't take into account the generalizations based on your search terms in the past. This is an unlogged in search. So if we look for needle felting, we can look, for example, it gives us an idea of the age of the listing, the total number of views, the daily views, the number of hearts. And something that is good to look at here, again, if you're wanting to see if there's a possibility of you being able to rank, if you search down for an item that has a lower number of daily views, so this is less than one one view per day. Um, but it's a fairly old listing and it's got 500 views and the heart percentage. It, it's, it's nearly up at 10% heartage per views. And this gives you an idea. Could I maybe compete with this item? Again, scroll down, see quite, quite a few of them, like 15 views a day. This is a massive listing. It's something that's hard to rank against. But if there's a few that have lower daily views, then there's a possibility you might be able to squeeze your listing in there. And then you can go through and look at all the rest of the listings. But that just gives you a quick idea. Is this keyword any good? Categories. This is so useful for items that have the tag needle felting. What categories are they mainly in? And this is so helpful because for some items, it's difficult to know what categories you should put your item into. So this might give you some ideas of what's a good place to place your listings. So for needle felting, 30% of them are in art and collectibles, fiber art, felting. So that's good to know. Um, but there's also some other ideas. I could possibly put it into ornaments or dolls and miniatures, figurines. These are all ideas for different categories. Synonyms, this is useful if you've decided this keyword isn't the best or you were maybe looking for some different ideas as well. It can give you some different words for needle and felted. It's not working the best for all, all things because not all items the synonym, synonyms work for um, because needle as provoke, well yes that is a synonym for the word needle but it's not relevant in this case but it could be handy. So there you have the keywords tool that gives you some ideas of keywords. We'll just scroll back up to the top that's a whole load of detail is in this to give you an idea if this is a good keyword. So my advice is to use this before you create a listing to try and think of the keywords that you're wanting to aim for. What are possible things to aim for in your shop? And this is the, your target keyword, your most important keywords, the things that you desperately want to rank for. OK, so I hope that's helped. As I say, eRank is my favorite tool. I use it just about every single day. And we're just going to be starting a deep dive playlist into looking at all the individual pages to hopefully give you a help how, how I use these pages and what everything means. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget, give us a thumbs up, come back every week and subscribe for more of these. Thank you so much.